girlfriend and I are so lucky to have found each other. We haven't been together long, but we have a tight bond. We go on a date almost every day and do everything with each other. Our shared passion is the TikTok account we created together to keep up with what's going on in the world and to make sure the world knows what's going on with us. Our account is pretty popular to say the least. Several of our TikToks have gone viral. It's because we look like such a perfect couple on camera. In reality, while our relationship is basically ideal, we do have our problems. Despite that, I think our problems aren't like most people, or at least we deal with our problems in ways nobody else would think of. That's what makes our love so special. The issue is that some people don't see what we have. The worst one of all is my girlfriend's dad. He's the biggest dirtbag I've ever met. Even his own daughter thinks he's a piece of garbage. It's so obvious that he needs to stop trying to control her life, but apparently, he will never learn. Ever since my girlfriend and I got together, her dad has been against it. More specifically, he's been against me. He hates me to my core, and I don't know what his problem is. At first, I thought he was just being an overprotective father which I can respect, but that's not what it is. He's just a control freak that threw hissy fits whenever he didn't get his way like a toddler would, except it was with a grown man. I've been trying to convince my girl to take more control of her life, but she's got a bunch of walls up when it comes to her father. She's resistant to do anything, and every time I've tried to talk to her about it, she changes the subject. Recently, I took her somewhere there would be no distractions, which was our local crusty diner. We were the only people in there besides the employees, which was perfect, because I needed to get what was weighing on my shoulders for all these months off my chest. It was about 1 in the morning which was the best time to talk about my plan, a way to get her father off our backs for good. What do you want to order? I don't want to eat here. I thought you liked places with dessert. I'll be eating dessert later when we get back to my bedroom. <laughs> this isn't funny, Eric. It's so drafty here. I'd prefer if we ate at McDonald's. Listen, I want to get something off my chest. We need to take action, Sarah. What do you mean? We have to do something about him. But that's my father. There's no way I could ever do that. Believe me, I've thought about it a lot. I've been dealing with him my entire life. So you admit you want to do it? Yes, but I can't. You hear me? I can't. Maybe you can't, but that's never what I was going to suggest. Wait, what? You mean- I'll do it. No, you don't have to do that for me. But I want to. Nothing would make me happier besides getting constant dessert without that old hag breathing down our necks. But I, I do need you to do one thing for me. Finally, I convinced her to go through with it. I knew she was likely to back out at any moment though, so I made sure we didn't waste any time. The very next night, I went over to her house before her dad got off of work. Then I reminded her of the plan. We knew we would be alone in the house for about an hour, and that was all the time we needed. As soon as we heard him coming through the door, I told my girl to start crying loud enough for the sound to reach downstairs. What the hell? Hey, sweetie, is that you crying? What the? I'm coming! I'll be right there! Just hold on! What the hell? Baby, it's me! Daddy, unlock the door! Open the goddamn door! What's going on in there? Hey, answer me! Open the door now! <laughs> That's when he kicked down the door, revealing a dark room with his daughter on the bed suddenly quiet, smiling psychotically. I'm here! What's wrong? Is everything okay? <laughs> hey, you're starting to scare me! What's going on with you? This isn't like you! Come on, snap out of it! Talk to me! At least let me know you're in there! Daddy? Is that you? Yes! Yes, it's me! Daddy's here! Can you please tell me what the hell is going on? Look! <gasps> What's back there? <laughs> it's you! What the hell do you want from us? Just stay away from my family, you piece of crap! Or I'm calling the cops! <laughs> People may say I'm not smart, but that plan was executed perfectly. It even made some good content, which happened to be our best TikTok ever. 
Our lives were so much better after that. A terrible weight was lifted from our shoulders, and I taught the love of my life how to take matters into her own hands. For a brief, beautiful moment, things were never better. But like all good things in life, it always comes to an end. First, it was just a few hate comments on our TikTok, but then it eventually got reported to the police. No one will ever know how worthless of a father he is, or was. We unfortunately never got a chance to film our next TikToks, because it wasn't long before they came to tear us apart. This story was inspired by a fatal incident that happened in April of 2021. After committing their heinous crimes as portrayed in the animation, the pair attempted to set the house on fire and take the vehicle to flee, along with the victim's debit card to Salt Lake City. The couple were then found four days later and immediately apprehended, and sentenced to life without parole. But what makes this case more chilling was how they made a TikTok in the aftermath of all the chaos. This is what it looked like. Day three, day three after. <laughs> Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. Hey, babe, what's up? Are you on your way home yet? Yeah, just got off work and heading home right now. Can you get me a Starbucks? I could use something tasty. I got the late night sweet tooth thing going on again. I can give you something sweet after you do cardio later. Just get me my Starbucks, damn it! I'm not trying to have my back broken for a measly one minute of cardio! All right, sweetheart, you got it. I didn't want to go to Starbucks that night. I just finished a 12 hour shift and I was really tired. I just wanted to head home and go to sleep. She always texted me over a dozen ingredients that she wanted in her drink. I can't understand how anyone wants all that junk in their coffee. I drove to the nearest Starbucks, which was way out of the way on route. I pulled up to the drive through first, but nobody came to the window. However, I could still see inside to the front counter though. There was a barista standing by the register, completely ignoring me. Hello, are you still open? She didn't budge when I tried to get her attention. She just twitched. The barista kept looking straight ahead into the store, and she was oddly wearing shackles on her wrists and ankles. What the hell? I thought she was wearing them as some sort of fashion statement. I know that's a stretch, but I didn't want to believe she was being held captive there. I never even heard of that happening, but I've seen lots of people wearing strange outfits before. I was also really tired and just wanted to get home. I would have gone home then if I didn't know my wife would make me go back out, so I pulled around to the parking lot to go inside. They weren't even supposed to be open for walking in, but clearly the only person working there wasn't running the drive-thru, so I had no other option. The door wasn't locked either. I marched in there and was about to go full Karen, and then I saw her face. It was a strange woman with the creepiest, strangest smile I'd ever seen. She wore this crown on her head, and this look that gave me chills. What made things even more strange was how she started to twitch even more when I stood in front of her. Uh, hello? Hi there, what can I get for you today? Oh, so you are open. Alright then. Here, it's for my wife. Can you give me all of this in one drink? As she grabbed the phone out of my hands, I tried my best to ignore the obvious shackles on her wrists. Once I had a better look at them, it was a lot harder to trick myself into thinking she was wearing them intentionally. I remember seeing these visible marks from where they'd been digging into her skin. Will that be all? Yeah, just that. I held out some cash to pay for the drink, but she didn't take it. Instead, she stared at me for an uncomfortably long time. It freaked me out. I thought she was about to cry for help or something. So, how was your day? <sighs> Look lady, I've got a wife, alright? Tell me to call the cops or take my money and make my drink. I want to go home! No problem, sir. Out of nowhere, I witnessed something I'll never get out of my head. Without breaking eye contact, she bent her arms backwards and stretched them all the way to the drink station on the counter behind her. She made the entire drink like that, not even looking at what she was doing. But somehow she made it perfectly. When she was done, she brought it back and handed it to me. I was at a complete loss for words. She hadn't even moved her feet or turned around. That's when I understood why she was twitching and acting like a freak. Because she was a freak. Here you go. Should I make one for me too? We can talk over coffee. Stay the hell away from me, you creep! I snatched the drink from her hand and ran straight out of there. I drove home trying to make sense of what I'd seen, but I couldn't. Nothing went right from the moment I pulled up to that Starbucks. I decided the best course of action was to act like nothing strange happened at all, and did my best to forget about it. 
I didn't tell my wife a single thing. The only way I could ever describe that woman was some kind of ghoul. Hello, how may I help you? Drop it. It's me. Oh, am it's I... the last time you failed to carry through a poor Starbucks conversation. Do you understand? Please! I tried! I really did! Please don't... Just don't get it! All you have to do is get them to talk to you! It should be the easiest thing in the world with how pretty you are! But somehow you all keep screwing it up! Please! I'll better! I swear! Don't you think you should have let that motivate you to do better? Mm -hmm. Well, it's too late for that now! This is the only thing you're good for! All of you! All of you will now be served coffee for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of your life! <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see her. Nothing makes me happier but her. What do you want, Dad? Are you seriously waiting to talk to that girl again? I thought I told you to get some sleep. Ugh. And I thought I told you that you can't tell me what to do anymore. I'm a grown man! I'd believe that if you got a job like your brother did. Why can't you be more like him? At least he pulls his weight around here and has a real girlfriend he's actually met before. I do have a real girlfriend! The only cheeks you're clapping is when you slap yourself in the face, you incel. I bet I get more action on a daily basis than he does! Yeah, right. Are all those tissues on your desk what you mean by action? <sighs> I've got ten gigabytes full of action if you want to see it! Ugh, no. I don't want to see a single bit of that nasty chick. I'm a married man. Is that what you wanted to tell me? That you think my super hot girlfriend is nasty? No. I wanted to remember remind you that it's been a year since you got fired. We wanted to help, but you're putting a massive financial strain on me and your mother. We know you're still stealing from us, you rotten thief. I'm telling you, for the last time, so you better stop sending money to that Bulgarian no good thought and get a job or you're out of here. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. No need to scream. Now leave me alone or I'm calling the cops. I'm serious. You've got two weeks and clean your room. It's a pigsty in here. <sighs> Finally, I thought he'd never leave. Not too much longer now, my love. <sighs> Four I am at last! I'm coming, dear! <sighs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited to finally see you, girl. It's almost noon. Are you still up for our scheduled call? I'm always up for you, baby. <laughs> okay. Hey, baby. It's so good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Are you doing all right? You look a little tired. Yeah, I'm okay. It's just my family. They've been on my back nonstop. Aw, for what? They don't believe we have a real long-distance relationship. They keep saying I have an addiction and need to go to therapy and all that crap. But you know what? If I did go to therapy, it would be because my mom is obsessed with me. All my life, I've never had a girlfriend because she wants to be the only woman I've ever touched. She wants to pamper me like I'm still a baby. Isn't that weird? Well, we have a private relationship, of course, so... Maybe they just don't understand. <laughs> you have gifted me almost 200k, so I get why they feel this way. Because you're the love of my life, my sweet little princess. I give you the world. The money means nothing to me. I have millions. 
You do? Really? I really do. Unfortunately, it's all tied up in assets, so I can only liquidate small amounts at a time. Of course, although I wouldn't call $5,000 a small amount. Is that how much I sent you last night? <laughs> I had already forgotten about it. Tell me, what would you like tonight? Oh, you don't have to. No, baby, I insist. Tell me anything, and it's yours. Well, okay. Let me send you a link. There's this new toy I really want. It's kind of expensive, but if you get it for me, I'll send you a video when I get it. There is no if for you, sweetheart. I'm already sending you the money over PayPal. Really? Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Don't even mention it. I'd do anything just to see that beautiful smile. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. Let me see if it went through already. Son, what is the meaning of this? Did you withdraw $5,000 from my retirement savings? What the hell is wrong with you, you idiot? How many times do I have to tell you to leave me alone? I'm talking to my girlfriend. That's it. I've had it with that wench. Let's see if you can still talk to her if I destroy that lousy computer. Don't you dare touch her. What are you doing? Put that away. What's going on? Who's that yelling? Babe? I'm not letting you get in my way anymore! I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And you, I'm done with you. I don't need you anymore. I've always hated you. What's happening? Sorry for the wait, babe. So, where did we leave off? This story was loosely inspired by a Florida man who grew an obsession with a Bulgarian model. His obsession became so bad that he ended up stealing $200,000 of his family's money just so he could fund the depraved online relationship. When the man's family confronted him, he took matters into his own hands and did what he did. The man has since been sentenced for his heinous crimes. I may live a simple life, but in a simple life, there's freedom. Paradise, even. All I have to do every single day is make a burger for whoever walks through my door. Some people might say flipping burgers can't be a fulfilling or successful lifestyle, but I'd say those people don't understand what true happiness even is. I'm the owner of my own restaurant. It's my name on the sign. I control every aspect of the business from how the burgers are made to what they're made of and even how they're served to the customers. To me, there's nothing better than feeding the hungry with a quality meal and making sure each and every customer has a thoroughly satisfying experience from start to finish. That's my business model, and the likes of Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob can eat their crummy hearts out with their dime a dozen Krabby Patties. My customers have the choice of any burger in town, but they still come to me because there's nothing better than taking shelter from the cold rain and eating a hot, juicy, scrumptious burger while surrounded by people who know your name. Take for instance my most regular customer, Teddy. The man is the biggest sad sack I've ever met in my life. He comes in here every day looking like he might just call it quits and jump into the deep fryer, but he always leaves in a better mood and ready to take on another day. He's more than just a customer to me. He's a lifelong friend. However, I do have to make sure he keeps his distance. Otherwise, he'd weasel himself into my family life, and as much as I love serving him burgers every day, there's not enough room for two dads in the Belcher family. I swear, it's like I have a sixth sense for when he's about to show up. I remember seeing his miserable, lonely self make his way toward my restaurant, looking worse than usual. Lucky for him, I've got a surprise that might cheer him up. Hey, Teddy, what can I get for you? The usual? Yes, I'll take one, Bob. And a friendly conversation as well. When have I ever said I didn't have time to talk to you, old buddy? Go on, take a seat. <sighs> Thanks, Bobby. 
No problem. So what's weighing on you these days? It's my ex-wife. When is it anything else? Denise again? Don't say her name. I can't stand it. Well, what did she do this time? Nothing. That's the problem. What do you mean, nothing? Isn't that what you're supposed to do when you're divorced? Well, maybe, but we still talked at least, you know? Yeah, I bet she loved that. Cram it, Bob! What's not to love about a lonely middle-aged man begging to get back together? I said a friendly conversation! I didn't ask you to make it worse, Bob! I'm sorry, it's just hard not to make fun of you when you're like this. Really? Is it that hard not to kick a man while he's down? Why don't I go across the street and get a burger from McDonald's? Or a place that actually respects me? Alright, alright, I'll stop. Now, tell me what happened. <sighs> The evil woman ghosted me. You mean she won't talk to you anymore? Exactly! She's not answering my calls, texts, emails, nothing! I can't reach her anywhere! I even went to her house to knock on her door, but she wasn't answering. What do you think that means? I think that means you're stalking her. Or maybe she's getting ran through by... Be serious, you jerk! I'm really struggling here! I feel like I hit rock bottom! That's not rock bottom, Teddy. My grandpa OD'd and got into a car crash after having an affair, but... That's beside the point. Look, I I'm sure she's just very busy, and we'll eventually come back to you. For what? Only to get divorced and be ghosted again? A man's heart can only take so much, Bob. I'm at my limit. Oh, man. Don't cry. I've made you something special to cheer you up. <laughs> really? What is it? Well, it's just the burger of the day, but I made it in your honor. Thanks, Bob. You really know how to cheer an old fella up. I think you'll dig these hamburgers. Today, the patties are a very unique blend. Everybody who's tried it said it might be the best burger I've ever made. Here you go, Teddy. All right, best part of my day. Pop, you've really outdone yourself this time. You gotta tell me, what's the secret? What'd you do this time? All I did was change the hamburger recipe. Can't you tell? I can't tell. It's different, obviously. But what's the difference? Why don't you give me your best guess? Don't make me think, Bobby. You know I'm not good at thinking. You mean you really can't tell? No, I can't. What is it? Doesn't it taste familiar? Like, maybe many years of marriage and betrayal? <gasps> what are you saying, Bobby? What are you saying? Isn't it obvious? Your ex-wife didn't disappear, Teddy. She's right here in my kitchen, in my meat grinder, right there on your plate. No, no, Bobby. Bobby, how could you? Why? What the hell is wrong with you? I did it for you, Teddy. If you were never going to get revenge for yourself, someone had to do it for you. Don't feed a guy his ex-wife, Bobby. Don't feed a guy his ex-wife. Life. If it makes you feel any better, you're probably used to the taste on her birthday. And especially on Valentine's Day. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel better at all! You're a sick man, Bobby! A sick man! Sit down! Where do you think you're going? I'm leaving before you grind me up into one of those things! You're not leaving, Teddy. We both know that. Where do you think you'll go? Across the street? Home? Anywhere but here! Yeah, right. Do you think anybody's burger will taste as good as mine? I, well, no. That's, that's a really good burger, actually. Exactly, Teddy. This is your home, and this is your burger. You deserve to enjoy it. Now, take a seat. Finish it. It's on the house. Mm, well, uh, all right, fine. That's it, Teddy. That's it. <laughs> I moved out of my parents' house in my early 20s. I wanted to live alone so I could learn to be independent. Things were ideal for a while. Aside from working my normal job and going out with my friends, I was always active on TikTok, following trends and tracking my gym progress with whatever dances were becoming popular. I would film a dance in my living room about once a day, but it wasn't long before I started to feel less than safe in my own home. At first, it was just when I was walking through the apartment complex, from my car to my front door, which was on the second floor, because I kept seeing this older Spanish guy that sort of showed up one day. I couldn't tell if he had recently moved in or if he was just some random creep who loitered there a lot, but he always stared me down as I walked by. I completely ignored him, 
house. My apartment complex doesn't have security and isn't in the best of areas, so I always spend as little time as possible in the outside area. Of course, like a lot of women, I'm no stranger to creepy dudes with starey prying eyes, so at first it didn't freak me out too bad. It wasn't until I started seeing him almost every single day that it got under my skin. Just thinking about going anywhere made my blood pressure spike, because I knew I would have to walk by my car with the 99% chance that this guy would be waiting outside in the common area and watch me walk by without looking away or blinking even once. It didn't help that he was unbelievably crusty too, always wearing the same unwashed clothes and looking like he hadn't showered in weeks. After a few weeks, I started seeing him in my dreams. I went crazy over it. One night, I was having so much trouble sleeping that I could barely keep my eyes closed. That's when I looked up at my closet and saw the man's face staring right at me. I felt my heart jumping in my throat, but when I blinked, he disappeared. I couldn't tear my eyes from that spot for so long afterward. I just waited to calm down, hoping beyond hope that I was only hallucinating and he hadn't actually found his way into my apartment. Eventually, I pulled my covers over my face and managed to sleep it off. The first thing I did when I woke up was leap out of bed and check to make sure there was nobody in my closet. Thankfully, there was nothing there but my clothes and it didn't look like anybody had been in there rearranging my stuff. I breathed a sigh of relief and went about my day, convinced that I just had an overactive imagination. However, this wasn't a one-time thing. It went on for weeks. Pretty much every other night, I would open my eyes to see his disgusting, terrifying face looking at me from the closet, smiling in the way that some men smile that just make your bones shiver. Each and every time I saw him, I told myself I was seeing things and pulled the covers over my eyes. With every night that I saw him and nothing serious actually happened, I got more and more worried I was going crazy from living alone. I started to think I should get a roommate to ease my mind. But I was very alone at the time. I didn't have friends I was close enough with to feel comfortable talking about what was going on with me. So I kept it bottled up inside until I would cry myself to sleep under the covers whenever I saw him. The sleep I lost over this affected my work too. I got in trouble for being late too often. So one night when I was looking ahead at a couple days off, I tried to stay up all night and sleep early the next night to reset my sleep schedule. I also figured I should record the experience on TikTok just to have something to do once the exhaustion set in. Before long, my dancing was almost comically bad from how tired I was. Then, I heard a very concerning noise coming from my balcony. It sounded like someone was out there, right on the other side of the door. That's when I heard an eerie male voice making some kind of twisted and audible sound. I can feel my whole body tense up. I wanted to believe I was hearing things now. I slowly approached the door and opened it, just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. And that's when I saw the most disturbing thing that still haunts me to this day. It was the same man standing on my balcony, inches away from me. I sprinted away, screaming, yelling hysterically, saying, Get the hell out of my apartment! I got to my front door and looked back at him as he tried to make his way inside. Get out of here! Somebody help me! To my horror, he just stood there, halfway through the balcony door, staring at me with this blood-curling smirk like he was enjoying the whole thing. I opened my front door and walked backwards into the breezeway. Finally, he retreated to the balcony and closed the door. I then started banging on my neighbor's door while constantly screaming to cause a scene. They came outside confused at first, but they were more than willing to help when I told them what was happening. The cops showed up soon after, and when they went inside my apartment to look for him, he was gone. He already climbed down from the balcony and fled. However, with the amount of time he spent stalking me in the common area in plain view of the security cameras, and with the footage I was able to get of him with my phone, it was easy to track him down. He was probably one of the most recognizable creeps out there. Everything else that came out of the investigation afterwards was just a series of confirmations of all my worst nightmares. He had indeed developed such a severe obsession with me that he climbed up my balcony just to get to me. But that's not even the worst part. The most terrifying thing was that it wasn't the first time he did so by any means. When the police looked deeper into my closet than I usually would, they discovered a horrible number of notes scribbled on the wall and hair follicles matching the man's DNA. That means all the times I thought I was hallucinating, he was actually there. He had been sneaking in through my balcony almost every night just to watch me while I slept. Since then, I posted the TikTok he barged in on and shared the story with as many people as possible just to raise awareness. The story was inspired by a true story regarding a 25-year-old woman who was filming herself dancing while making a TikTok video. Midway during the TikTok, a man can be seen breaking in and entering the woman's apartment through the balcony door. 
The woman is seen hysterically screaming and shouting at the man to leave her property while exiting through the front door and knocking on her neighbor's door. The man was later caught and arrested, and identified as Angel Gomez, who had been stalking the victim since she moved in. It was alleged that the man had climbed his way up into the building and into the victim's balcony. He has since been hit with an abundance of charges. I've been stuck working at Starbucks full-time for longer than I'd like to admit. Even worse, I used to work the morning shift every single day, which took an even greater toll on my mental health. I'd have to go in at the crack of dawn to immediately start taking orders and making drinks, when I barely had time to wake up after dragging myself out of bed. After a while, the striking regularity of the routine started to make everything feel unreal, like I was just a robot repeating the same tasks over and over again for the exact same set of people, day in and day out. Around where I live, most of the early morning heads were truckers or construction workers that all looked similar, especially the people that come in the drive through which is where I was always stationed. Of course, there were a few exceptions. The one that always gave me the worst time was this specific cranky old Karen that would always come through and order multiple ridiculously complex drinks that each had just about every possible ingredient in them. As soon as I noticed her car pull up, I had to prepare myself to deal with her. But unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing odd about her. Every time I saw her, I would see these horribly creepy dolls in the passenger and back seats around her. They were strapped in and pointed to face me at the window like this crazy old lady thought they were real people. I always assumed she was bonkers and ordered most of the drinks for the dolls. She came here so often that I even started to memorize her orders. I knew exactly what she was going to say, but I also knew she was going to pretend to ask her family. For this reason, I always tried to get her through as quickly as possible, but due to her Karen nature, she would have to have it her way. Good morning. What can I get for you today? Excuse me? What did you just say? I said, what can I get for you today? Don't rush me, nuthugger. Can't you see I'm in the middle of a discussion with my family? My apologies. Please, take your time. Thank you. Now, what does everyone want? Oh my god, I can't believe this woman. Every day is like this. Doesn't she have plenty of time to think about what she's going to get while she's waiting? Ugh. You just gotta have all the attention you can possibly get, can't you? I hope you rot in hell, you old hag. Hello? Anybody in there? I said I'm ready to order! Huh? Uh, oh, my apologies, ma'am. What's your order? All right, little boy. I'll take a grande iced... Well, would you look at that? I was right. You're getting the same exact thing you always get. And I can tell by the way your wrinkly, flabby old lips are flapping. <gasps> and two extra shots of espresso. Did you get all that? It seemed like you weren't paying attention. Nope, I got all of it. Just give me a moment and I'll have it right out for you. You better make it right this time, boy. Don't make me throw my dentures at you. When do I ever make it wrong? I've been here dealing with you for years. You're just like all the other crazy people, a creature of habit. You'll never change until you drop dead. I guarantee it. Now, what was that other one again? Uh, oh yeah. Here you go. I can tell this is wrong. Are you deaf or were you just not listening to what I said? Ma'am, I can assure you that every drink was made to order. Would you at least try them before you criticize the way I do my job? <gasps> Don't you dare give me an attitude, boy! I demand to see your manager right now! That's how just about every day went with that woman. Despite the fact that she was clearly insane and I was doing everything she asked, nothing was ever good enough for her. There was always something wrong with the way I was doing things. One morning, I eventually reached my limit and simply had enough. The woman placed her order and I was just about ready to deliver her drinks. That's when I headed to the drive through window and said, Here you go, ma'am. Enjoy the rest of your morning. Excuse me, where is the rest? Huh? Oh. 
Oh, you mean the other drinks you ordered. Well, our store policy has changed. We now only serve real human beings and refuse to fulfill orders for creepy dolls like the ones you think are your family. What did you just say? Don't disrespect my family, you worthless minimum wage coffee guzzling caffeine rat. Come here! Get off of me, you creep! Let me go or I'm calling the cops! The cops can't save you if you're already dead! I said back off! What the hell is wrong with you, lady? No! It's what's wrong with you! Consider this a return! After that incident, I ended up with partial second-degree burns on my face. I then had a chat with my manager and argued that I was justified because the woman was completely crazy and that she always had these creepy dolls in the car with her. However, the manager didn't believe me and decided to pull up the security footage to prove it. When he opened it up, I was in complete shock at what I saw. In the woman's car was a real family of actual living people on every Every single occasion she came to the Starbucks. Ah! This story was submitted by a viewer in which he alleged was true. The viewer claims that he really did hallucinate and see those dolls in the lady's car while working at Starbucks as a barista. One can only speculate that the hallucinations came from early morning fatigue or potentially something that was laced in his coffee for that short period. This happened in the early 2000s, when webcams were slowly becoming more common. At the time, I was just a teenager who was lucky enough to have one, and what I did with it was more or less what any teenage boy would think of. I tried an early proto version of Omegle and Chat Roulette, which was just a typical chat room of the era with webcam capabilities and a randomizer for connecting with strangers. Like most guys, I was mainly hoping to run into a girl, but on par with the average chat room experience, I more often got connected with random creepy old dudes. I still managed to entertain myself by trolling them until they got butt hurt. I don't remember the name of the site, and I'm sure it's not up anymore, but it was still fun enough for me to spend most of a whole weekend surfing through the current of random strangers. However, on the third night or so of messing around, I found out just how disturbing things could get. I came across this really hot brunette chick, maybe in her mid-twenties, who was wearing a tight-fitting t-shirt and eating an apple. I blinked in disbelief at first, completely expecting her to be gone from the screen when I opened my eyes. But to my surprise, she didn't skip me. I immediately put myself on my best behavior so she would stay. Unfortunately, I was out of practice with talking to girls at the time, so I was pretty nervous. I remember my attempt at flirting not going well at all. How do you... <laughs> How do, you, how do you like them apples? <laughs> um, it's good, I guess. I, uh, I, I bet I taste better than that apple. <laughs> Alright, kid, you're like 12. You could be my little brother. I sure am 12. 12 inches. <laughs> I have a boyfriend, okay? He's gonna be here any minute now. I wasn't prepared for her to pull the boyfriend card. It made me shut up for a moment and arrange my approach. While I was trying to think of something else to say, the girl just kept eating her apple in oddly big bites while staring at me with a really judgmental look on her face. I didn't really care though. I had no clue why she was still talking to me, but I was stoked that she was. The awkward silence made me worried she would get bored and leave. But then out of nowhere, in the middle of a bite, her webcam glitched. My heart jumped a little bit as I thought she might be about to get disconnected. Hey, is something wrong with your internet? You look all glitchy. Right as I spoke, it got worse. The glitching distorted her face and made her look disturbing. She was twitching back and forth and the audio was stuck on loop as it deteriorated more and more. Is something wrong? And then things started to get demonic. She got up from her chair and got closer to the webcam, making the details of the corruption clearer and more nightmarish than ever before, until she didn't even look human anymore. Is something wrong? I didn't know what in the world was going on. I assumed it had to be a problem with the connection. It 
was like this woman was actually fighting her way through the glitch in real life. She then reached over and pulled a fresh apple into frame, and in her other hand was a syringe which she used to inject something into the apple. What the hell is going on? What are you doing, lady? Ah! What the hell is wrong with you? Whatever I was watching unfold on my screen had me thoroughly terrified. I flinched every time something unexpected happened. But finally, she set the apple down on the desk and laughed like a creature from hell itself. I can still hear that sound in my nightmares to this day. I was the slightest bit relieved when she had started to leave, glitching her way out of the screen and presumably leaving the room. When she was gone, the chaos of the distorted subsided significantly, but it was definitely still there. For a moment, I stared at the apple on the screen with my jaw to the floor. I tried to wrap my head around what it was that I just witnessed, but I was at a total loss. Then, somebody else entered the room. This time it was a man about the same age, but there was something not right about him. He looked half dead, like his soul was missing from his body. He sat down at the desk and started eating the apple that the girl had left. Hey man, don't eat that! She did something to it! I tried to warn him, but he flat out ignored me. I wasn't even sure if he could hear me. He must have been unhinging his jaw with every bite and barely chewing before swallowing. Within a few seconds, he was halfway done. But then out of nowhere, the horrible glitching got just as bad as it was before, and he dropped the apple and started violently thrashing. He started convulsing, snapping his head back while the glitch in the webcam made it look like he was transforming into a demonic creature. I couldn't take it anymore. I closed the window and shut off my computer, then unplugged it from the wall for good measure. I was sweating profusely and hyperventilating. All I could do was slink into bed and wait for my nerves to calm down. But I didn't get to sleep at all. I was unable to see anything in the darkness except for all those horrible images until the sun came up in the morning. I still see it in my dreams all these years later. For the longest time, I wanted to convince myself that what I witnessed was just some crazy fluke due to some rare bug in my computer or theirs, or some kind of crazy glitch in the internet connection. But I know what I saw, and I've never seen anything like it before or since. I don't usually tell anyone about this because I know they'll think I'm a delusional liar, but I honestly believe that I was involved in witnessing something more than a homicide. I truly believe that girl really did have a demon inside her that made her do it, and all that glitching in the computer was just a telltale sign that she was something that was not meant to be seen, or something not of this world. This story was inspired by a true story regarding an incident a young man faced when on chat roulette. The person who submitted the story has attached an image of the aftermath of the very same webcam interaction the man experienced. Whether it was a prank or not, just the simple fact of witnessing something like that is just downright disturbing. cycle. Me and my single mother would film ourselves doing TikTok dance videos before her bipolar disorder kicked in. Things were never the same after my dad left, so I have been living with her ever since, even in my 20s. But when the pandemic arrived, my mother and I became depressed due to all the restrictions. So, with nothing much to do, we turned our attention to TikTok. The need for everyone to express themselves online skyrocketed. When I told my mother about the app, she immediately became interested. Then, one day, I taught my mother a few dance moves which we posted on the app. But almost every time we danced and made videos together, I knew it was coming. Every time the song ended, I knew she was going to lash out and have a tantrum, scaring me the hell away to my room. I would always lock myself in there for long periods of time. Seconds turned to minutes, and then hours. It was like I was held captive and a prisoner in my own home, causing me to only come out when she was asleep. And on the next day, 
then the day after that, and so on and so forth. It would repeat again and again. She always went berserk and snapped in the middle of every TikTok. It was like she was being possessed, and would always tear down the house by breaking glasses, toppling tables and chairs in the room. After that, she told me to go to my room while constantly ranting. Her words completely distorted. Get the hell out and go to your room now! So, without thinking twice, I ran to my room, locking it to protect myself from her. I crouched next to my bed as my body shook in fear. Then, while I was crying, I could hear my mother making so much noise in the living room. It sounded like she was destroying the house. I was afraid that if I didn't move out that she could do something even more drastic, like start a fire. Then, suddenly, the noise stopped, and the house was eerily quiet. As I approached the door, thinking about whether I should take a peek outside, I heard a knock. Then it was followed by an ominous voice telling me to Stay inside your room, no matter what. When I asked my mother why, she told me her boyfriend was coming and didn't want me to interfere. So, I thought for a moment that her transformation was quite abrupt. She had been dating this guy for almost a year now, and to be honest, I didn't know what she saw in him, because she always gave me the creeps whenever they were together. She was head over heels for this guy who was obviously taking advantage of her, but even when I tried to warn my mother, she never listened. It was pretty strange though, because this happened every time her boyfriend was around. So, while keeping the door locked, I asked, Is something wrong? Why can't I join you guys? I swore I heard a growl before she replied and said because we're gonna do stuff okay it's none of your damn business you nosy rodent for the first time i was afraid of her convinced she wasn't the mother i grew up with her sudden change of behavior caught me off guard and this wasn't the end later that night i went back to crying as i was held captive inside my room for hours upon end and once i heard the sound of snoring the worst part was that I'd starve while waiting for them to finish their business. It was my only chance to leave. So, I would slowly tiptoe on my way to the kitchen area and living room, where my mother and her lover passed out, sleeping beside each other. I remember seeing several bottles of alcohol scattered throughout the coffee table. It was evident that they were pissed drunk and unconscious. I then quietly approached the table. <coughs> but stopped midway when my mother coughed and changed her sleeping position. I waited for her to stay still before grabbing the food and returning to my room quickly. Undetected, I had the only meal I could get my hands on and went to bed soon after. The following day, I heard someone banging at my door. When I came to look closer, my mother cheerily invited me to do our daily TikTok dance. I was disheveled, confused, and couldn't handle this bipolar persona any longer. One moment, she was obsessed and aggressive, and the next she was jovial and optimistic. I would notice that she was kind and gentle whenever her boyfriend was away, <laughs> but whenever he dropped by to stay for the night, she'd transform into a different person like Jekyll and Hyde, forcing me to remain in my room while they did more stuff. I was baffled by how that man could change her so much in such a short amount of time. I didn't want this cycle to continue because it was hurting my relationship with her. So, one day, I stood up to her while she was washing the dishes in the kitchen. I approached her saying something like, I've had enough of this. I want you and your boyfriend to break up. He's turning you into a monster. That's when she turned off the faucet and didn't say a word. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, and with her back turned against me, it only made the atmosphere eerier. Then, out of the blue, she grabbed a knife from the knife set and said, Let's make another TikTok! She then started chasing after me. I immediately went to my room and locked the door. I cried, begging her to stop as she constantly stabbed the door. But no matter what I said, her rage and aggression was amplified. She no longer listened to me no matter how much I pleaded for her to stop. Then, all hell broke loose when my mother broke through the door and charged at me. This story was inspired by a true case involving an evil mother who posted a sick TikTok video, claiming to be apologetic and saying she was sorry to her parents because of how bad she messed up. Below is a screenshot of the alleged TikTok. And if things weren't already disturbing, the TikTok was filmed only one month after committing the heinous crime. It was alleged that the woman's motive for her actions was because apparently the victim was getting in the way of her love life. In addition, the woman has since been sentenced along with the boyfriend for his involvement.
don't get me wrong, I love Marge. Marrying her was the best thing that ever happened to me, aside from beer and donuts. And my kids, I guess. Not every man is lucky enough to have a wife who enjoys the same things that they do, like watching TV, eating, sleeping, sitting on the couch. You know, family things. But lately, there's been something in the way. It's like there's a third person in this marriage now. Years ago, I told Marge that I liked her long, towering hairdo, and I jokingly told her she should never cut it again. I guess that makes it my fault that she hasn't taken care of it since then. I don't even know how long it is anymore. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. I thought it was bad when I started tripping over it, but that was a long time ago. Now, I can never get away from that thing. No matter where I go in the house, no matter what I'm doing, I can't escape it. I could be hiding in the garage or taking a dunk or going downstairs to the kitchen for a midnight snack, but that thing always finds me. There's nowhere I can even look where it won't be in my sight. I used to love that tangly rat's nest of beautiful blue hair, but a man needs his time and space to himself, and it's not just that Marge doesn't take care of it anymore. I think it started to take on a life of its own. Maybe I'm just going crazy, but I swear that thing follows me around the house. It gets bigger every single day and slithers around the corners as Marge walks around, dragging that nasty anaconda thing behind her, picking up all the dust bunnies and pieces of trash on the floor. One thing I've noticed, anything that gets caught up in that mess never escapes. Marge never washes it, so everything just gets stuck, slowly disappearing into the thick of it. She doesn't realize she's feeding some kind of beast. I saw this thing on TV called a tapeworm. It's like she's got one attached to her head and it's controlling her mind. I know what I said all those years ago, but she just likes it too much. She protects it like it's one of her children. Even Maggie gets jealous of it. I do too. I don't even feel like the man of the house anymore. It watches me at night when I can't sleep. What are you looking at, you disgusting blue snake? I know you can hear me. You act dumb, but I see exactly what you're doing. Just know that the only anaconda allowed in this household is mine. You got that? Homie, come back to bed. You have to work tomorrow. Nice one. Saved by the bell. I'm coming, Marge. I've got my eye on you. I even broke the biggest rule in the book about being a man and tried communicating with her about it. It all became too much for me one night after Marge and I made love for the first time in a while. I almost couldn't go through with it. That hairy beast was right there the whole time, and it kept it kept touching me. Afterwards, I had to talk to her. Marge, can I say something to you? Huh? What is it, homie? It's about your hair. I know! It's getting so long! I love it! Don't you? What the... Homer, what's wrong? Say something! <laughs> You have to cut it. What? Why? I thought you liked it long. I know you do. Anyway, it's it's gone too far. You have to do something about it. I'm at my limit. At least trim the dead ends or something. <sighs> I don't think I will. I like it the way it is. Why should I change the way I look for someone else? Marge, I'm begging you. I'm your husband. And this is my hair. If you don't like it, you can sleep on the couch. And that's when I finally realized that I have been replaced in my own marriage. I can see it all happening. Pretty soon, it'll replace me as the father of my children, too. It'll drop them off at school, show up at their dance recitals, and watch them graduate. I won't even get to bail my son out of jail his first time time. But time moves on, and I have to as well. I'll hold on to my manhood for as long as I can. That stupid hair doesn't carry its own weight. It can't clean the gutters. It can't mow the lawn. That's still my job. Homie, what are you doing? I asked you to get the mail, not mow the lawn. Fine, ignore me. You won't see much more of me if that's the way you're gonna treat me. Stupid Bart, stupid March, stupid hair. I'm tired of feeling like a third wheel in my own house. I gotta do something about it. <gasps> I don't know what came over me in that moment, but sometimes a man just has to follow his gut instincts, and I've got guts. It's time for a trim! <laughs> I should have done it years ago. There's nothing like taking matters into your own hands. I ran that heavy-duty lawnmower right over the foul lock of hair, aiming to cut straight through it. But that's not exactly what happened. It got tangled and sucked into the mower while the blades kept spinning. 
And before I knew it, the whole thing got ripped out of my hands. There was nothing I could do but watch the blades wound up the whole thing into a ball. And that's when Marge came bursting out the window. No! No, a few months ago, my girlfriend moved to Canada to study at university in the Chinese-Canadian exchange program. Things were going well between us until she left the country, so we agreed to keep the relationship going long distance. Most of our connection was kept over Skype, which we used to call each other at least once a day. During one particular video call, the conversation started out totally normal. But this call would end in the most horrible of ways. In the beginning, we were just making small talk about our day-to-day -day lives. I briefly mentioned how things were going back in the homeland, but most of the interest was focused around my girlfriend's experience since she was the one living in a foreign country. We also kept each other updated on how we were doing in school. That night, she had just gotten a printed report for all of her grades, so I asked her to show it to me. She went looking for it in her desk, bending down out of view for just a few seconds. That's when I saw something in the window behind her that made me shout. It was the face of a man looking inside with his hands pressed against the glass. Look behind you! There's someone in your window! My girlfriend jumped up in surprise to me yelling, but the video buffered just as she turned around to look. And by then, there was nobody there. What do you mean? I don't see anybody. I swear, there was someone there just a second ago. Maybe it's my webcam quality. Everyone at school says it's super bad. I was reluctant to brush it off, but because of the time difference, it was nighttime in Canada while I had just woken up for the morning. So I was still groggy and needed to rub my eyes a bit more. We tried to move on and continue our conversation. Then a few minutes later, we were on the subject of grades again. She had shown me her report card and we were talking about the point system in Canada when my eyes drifted over her shoulder just to see her window sliding open. What the hell? Look out! Behind you! Again? Are you being funny? No, look! Finally, she turned around and this time didn't look back. I couldn't see her face. But by the way she didn't move, I could tell that she had just been hit with that same fear that hit me. Who did that? I don't know, babe. Just be careful. It must be the same guy that I saw before. She got up and slowly walked to the open window. There was nobody in view out there, but there was no telling how close they could be lurking. As soon as she got within arm's reach, she grabbed the window and slammed it shut, then double-checked the locks. When she got back, she tried to play it off, but I could tell she was concerned. I recommended to her that it was wise to have the cops on speed dial, just in case anything happened. I felt a tiny bit of relief as she went looking for her phone, but I kept a close watch on the video feed. But then out of nowhere, a rock came hurtling through the glass and smashed right into the webcam. I heard my girlfriend screaming, but I couldn't see her. There was a crack in the lens and the whole angle was knocked off kilter. What's going on? Call the cops! Get out of there! Baby, what's happening? In that moment, she stopped screaming and readjusted the camera. I could see the hole that was left in the window behind her, but even more disturbing than that was the look on her face. My girlfriend then lifted her phone up to the screen saying, I can't, it's dead! My heart sank. Her phone wouldn't turn on, which meant I had to be the one to call the police for her. But then again, I was on the other side of the world. I'll do it, just get out of there, please! Hurry, I'm scared! I frantically pulled out my phone to call the police, but with all the panic I was feeling, I was fumbling with it like a total idiot. It took me so long just to get the keypad and dial the right number. When I was finally calling them, I looked back up to the camera and saw the most disturbing, gut-wrenching thing I have ever witnessed. The window was smashed open by that horrible creep, petrifying my girlfriend with fear as he crawled through. Before I knew it, he charged and tackled her to the ground off screen. 
Her screaming was unbearable, and there was nothing I could do. I couldn't see her anymore, but then that rotten freak stood up into view and noticed me on the screen. I remember his face was so gross and vile. I couldn't believe the pleasure he was obviously getting out of this, and it was the last thing I saw too. He flashed a smile at me right before smashing the webcam to bits, causing the image to freeze right on his face. <laughs> The call then disconnected and I was left at an absolute loss. That's when I finally Hello? noticed the emergency phone operator was trying to get my attention through the phone. Hello? Is there anybody there? Hello? Please, you have to help me! My girlfriend was just attacked! Where is your girlfriend? In Canada! Canada? This is a local number. There's nothing we can do for someone in Canada. What do you mean? I don't know who to call but you! You have to do something! Sir, please calm down. No! Don't tell me to calm down! You do something! Do your job! She needs help and you're not helping! Please! Please, you have to help her! She needs to be okay! SOMEBODY HELP HER! This story was inspired by a case that happened on April 15th of 2011. A man had been chatting via webcam with his girlfriend when he saw an intruder force his way into her room and do what he did. The image below is a photo of the victim. The next photo is a photo of the ex-boyfriend who had to witness the whole ordeal. The final image is a photo of the assailant. He has since been sentenced for his crimes. It all started out like any other day on the job. I was in a familiar room looking at the map on the wall, accompanied by someone who goes by the name, The Map. Hey Dora, are you ready for your next adventure? Yes sir. Now, study the route carefully. Things have changed since last time. The Swiper Cartel has moved in on our territory. Yes sir, I shall start here and then make my way north through the forest. Then, after a mile, I divert west and navigate through the muddy mangrove until I reach the shoreline. I shall find the star-shaped rock on the beach and that's where they'll give me the stuff. <laughs> Very good. Those smarts will keep you alive longer than your parents. <laughs> now get going! I left the map room and entered a large vacant restaurant, where my friend was supposed to be waiting for me. I called out to him. Boots? Where are you? I'm taking a dump. I ate way too many tacos and pupusas. Well hurry up, I need you to come with me to pick up some stuff from the cartel. I mean, my car. But, Dora, you don't drive. I mean, it's for my parents. What are you talking about? Your parents have been dead for years. It, it's... Look, idiot. What I'm trying to say is, the map told me I can get a car if I pick something up for him at the shore. My parents left it with him as part of my inheritance, and I can get it if I help him keep the family business going. Really? Why did they wait so long? Well, what's the point of having a car if you're not old enough to drive it? I hate lying to Boots, but I knew he wouldn't understand. It's not like he was stupid, though. He's the best companion I could really ask for, and the only thing I have left in this cruel world. When my parents died, we vowed to keep each other safe, no matter what. <gasps> Give me all you got! Swiper? What are you doing here? This isn't your turf! Yeah, and it'll be mine once I mark my territory with your blood! Leave us alone before I pistol whip you with my tail! Swiper, no swipe! <laughs> <laughs> Boots viciously attacks Swiper. Come on, let's get out of here before we catch any heat for this. I had to grab Boots and get him away from there before things went too far. Sometimes I forget how ferocious he can be when it comes to protecting me. He could have easily killed Swiper if I hadn't stopped him. My parents never would have approved of such violence. But in that moment, I wondered if I should have just let it happen. I couldn't think about it for too long, though. Before I knew it, we reached our destination, which meant it was time to do the dirty work. We made it, thank goodness. Uh, Dora? Where's the car? I have to get something for Mr. Map first. Then he'll trade it to me. Just wait here and stay out of sight. Dora, why do I have to stay out of sight? What's going on? I'm sorry, Boots, but everything will be alright. It's best you don't know. You'd only be worried. I know I won't make the same mistakes as Mommy and Poppy. Look, over there! Hola, Map sent me. Hmm, something's not right here. What's that map up to? Let's go, Vamanos! Dora, what did they give you? 
What? Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, I didn't look too closely. It's something for the map. Probably just some special tortillas or something. Dora, what's in your backpack? Nothing. Just leave it alone. I'm calling the cops. I'm sorry, Dora, but you made me do this. <gasps> Boots! Wait! Don't look at that! It was already too late. The cat was out of the bag, but it was no cat. Nothing has ever hurt more than seeing the look of disappointment on Boots' face when he found out which part of the family business I was really continuing. Dora, why? How could you, Dora? This is exactly what got your parents killed. I know, I know. Believe me, I didn't want to do it, but I had to. It's the family business. They're counting on me to keep the supply chain intact, and you know what happens if I let them down. <sighs> I'm well aware. Let's just get the hell out of here and make this our last delivery to that dirty old map. We can't keep living like this, Dora. You're right. Let's get out of here. Those were the best moments of my life. Things were finally looking up. Boots and I were going to take on the whole world, go anywhere we wanted to go, see and do everything we felt like, just the two of us, an inseparable duo. I was so happy for the first time in what felt like forever, but I let it get to my head. I got distracted. I forgot to find a different way home and absentmindedly went back the way we came. I stopped thinking for just a second and it caused everything to come <gasps> crashing down. Oh God, no! It's over for you now, Dora the Explorer! Any last words? Swiper, no swiping! Swiper, no swiping! Swiper, no- No, no, no! Okay, okay, I'm sorry. You can swipe for everything we have. Just give me a minute. Backpack, backpack. Backpack, backpack. He's the backpack loaded up with things and knickknacks too. Anything that you might need, he's got inside for- ah! I used to go to a local Starbucks when I resided at San Jose. The coffee shop was always the perfect place to go for students like myself, who preferred to study and do their homework in a cafe. One of the perks was getting to use their free Wi-Fi, while getting an endless supply of coffee to help keep us awake to study throughout the night. During most of my college curriculum, I would make the most of the Starbucks by staying there until the coffee shop closed. So, as a regular customer there, I knew all of the staff and became familiar with the rotating shifts, including the seasonal change of the menu. But that's not all. I was also keen on watching other customers come and go. It became such a daily habit that I quickly recognized a creepy customer coming into the store. But unlike all the students and young professionals who came in and out of the shop, this person was an old hag, constantly harassing people, especially the staff. First, she'd make all sorts of demands whenever she asked the workers to customize her coffee. Let me get one venti blonde roast hazelnut latte with substitute regular milk for soy milk, two pumps of sugar cookie syrup, three pumps of cinnamon dolce syrup, one pump of dark caramel, light ice, salted caramel, cold foam on top, three dashes of vanilla powder, caramel brulee topping, three extra shots of blonde espresso, and six shots of sugar-free vanilla syrup. Now hurry up and make it before I give you one star on Yelp, you ginger! Then, she'd holler out loud, saying a bunch of nonsensical stuff. So without thinking twice, it gave me the impression that this lady was nuts. There was a time when she asked the staff to add all the sugar they had at their disposal in her drink. The worker expressed her concern for the old lady's health. However, the old lady responded with rage. She relentlessly slammed her fists on the countertop while giving her demands. The janitor tried to calm her down, but it only made her even more hysterical. Moments later, she picked up a chair and threw it across the floor, provoking one of the staff to call the cops. As a result, some customers were getting anxious and reluctant to approach the line, while others simply left the shop to avoid trouble. This creepy old woman was bad for business, so at this point, point, I prayed for the police to arrive as soon as possible before things got out of hand. But before the cops could get to Starbucks, the old lady spat on the floor and quickly left. I thought that would be the end of it. However, 
One night, when only one employee was doing all of the tasks while I was studying for an upcoming exam, I asked for a refill on my drink. But as soon as the beverage was brought to me, I spotted something disturbing. There was something unpleasant with the odor and color of the drink. I didn't know how to describe it, but it smelled like there was some kind of chemical in the drink, giving it the colors green and yellow. It looked so weird that I was scared to drink it. I had never seen anything like it at Starbucks before, and it was the first time I encountered something so abhorrent that I wanted to puke. When I glanced at the employee, I noticed she was new on the job. I wanted a refund for my beverage since the prices at Starbucks never came cheap. I then complained and even accused her of mixing the wrong ingredients, but she was confused. The newbie said she knew exactly what she was doing when she made my drink. I then began to feel more concerned now than annoyed, but it all made sense when something disturbing went down in the next few seconds. Out of nowhere, the same old woman from before ran out of the kitchen toward the front door. But before she could leave, the barista caught up with her attempting to apprehend the woman. Women, so get off me before I give you more emotional damage! I stood there in shock, not knowing whether I should intervene or call the cops, but it was all too late because after a minute of tussling back and forth, the old lady managed to escape and drove off in a vehicle. That's when the barista ran out of the shop and began taking snapshots of the license plate. As the culprit left, I made a call to 911, reporting everything that happened. About half an hour later, they arrived and immediately asked us for the surveillance footage. The police relied heavy on the various snapshots of the car license plate and were able to identify and locate the culprit. About a week or two later, word got around that the woman was eventually detained in her residence. When police searched her home, they found out that she kept gallons of rubbing alcohol scattered across the floor and living room and kitchen area. At first, the cops speculated that she was running a business selling disinfectants, but after investigating the kitchen at Starbucks, they found clues connecting the large bottles of alcohol at the culprit's house and the drinks at the coffee shop indicating that the chemical compositions were precisely the same. When the woman was taken into custody and questioned at the station, she denied all the evidence pointing to her as the suspect. It was concluded that she was somehow able to sneak into the back rooms of the shop and intentionally taint some of the ingredients with the hazardous chemicals she had brought from her home. I was so relieved that I didn't take a sip of that awful concoction and that the lunatic was arrested before anyone else could get hurt. This story was inspired by a case that happened at a San Jose Starbucks. A woman was arrested under the suspicion of tampering and attempting to put bottles of orange juice mixed with a lethal dosage of rubbing alcohol into the refrigerator of the coffee shop. A woman named Ramine was later arrested after police received a call from the manager of the Starbucks, reporting suspicious activity inside the store. Below is a mugshot of the culprit in question. 